Seven. Move your oh, no, feet, no, Ted. Ten, Move your feet. Them, this is JD's podcast. And JD's Rubber Boots podcast. He's gonna sit and relax and tell you all sorts of stories. He's gonna talk all about life and sports. And probably we'll play some games. And if nothing else, you know we're gonna have a laugh. This is the podcast for the Masters. We're at Augusta National, the first ever Augusta Rubber Boots Eclipse segment. Beautiful. Standing next to Puffy here. Puffy's wow. staring into the. It's into like, the it looks like a, a, a like a sun moon, quarter <laughs> sun moon. What? Yeah, you yeah. know how the moon yeah. has the quarter, sun, quarter moon. It's a quarter sun now. Bob Week standing next to him. Beautiful. Bob, um, your take on the eclipse? Are you supposed to wear glasses? I don't know. I don't have any glasses on. My eyes are kind of itchy. No, it looks pretty neat. It looks what like it's... It, seriously, what is it? this is like peak eclipse time. It looks like you can see the moon just moving over in front, and it looks like it's going to fulfill like fill everything, but I don't think it's going to quite do it around here. We're not quite on the perfect line. Ladies and gentlemen, Bump Bump is back on the pod. Also, I'm I wish I could draw teeth on the open part. It would be like a cat's mouth. That's what it looks like, a cat's mouth. I see it. Puffy? Puffy? Yeah, what? a cat's mouth. Yeah. Puffy? Okay, mm. for the good of the pod, yeah. take off the glasses and stare into the sky. <laughs> My God! <laughs> it burns, Jimmy, it burns. Okay, I gotta try it. Can you hold the mic? No, sure. hold on, I can do it. I can do it. Did they sing, sing the theme song? We were all given master's glasses today. Don't <laughs> to the master's. Is that what it, she meant, Bonnie Tyler? Yeah. Oh, so is it, it's not full yet? No, I don't think well, so. It'll it'll be be full full. It's never going to be full, full here. here. So what, oh. oh, so we're always going to see so like, like the little quarter the, moon? For the two viewers that are in Niagara Falls that are watching this. I think it's right. cloudy there though. Is it? That's what a lot of people are saying from Losers. back home. Yeah, this is way, it's brilliant. How it's, long can we hold this segment where we're all just staring up at the sky? <laughs> Oh yeah. Round. Every now and then I get a like little a bit lonely. <laughs> then you're never coming round. Turn around. Bright eyes. Every now and then I fall apart. <laughs> and I need you now tonight. I f- need you more. <laughs> that was a little ode to. Uh, Wedding singer. What, was it no, wedding singer no, or old, old school? school? Old school. Old school. <laughs> old school. <laughs> but I think he was in Wedding Singer too. That guy. I think it no, might have been a wedding. I think it was, was wedding. Old no, it was old school. That was, was old school. The they were also in, um, was in uh, Starsky and Hutch. Were they? They did something. Weren't they in The Hangover? The first Hangover? Wasn't yeah, that were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. They were. What were they called? I don't know what they're called. Honestly. Paul and Ass, maybe. Paul and Ass. Is that really right? Is that right? You just make that up on the spot. It's pretty creative. So here we are. That's it. So that that's all we're going to see is this thing. Pretty brilliant, though. Every hundred years, though. Okay. Yeah. Let's make a plan to all be here for the next one. <laughs> I'm going to live till 213. So I'm going to see seven more eclipses. Is that all we're going to do for the podcast this week? We just send stuff this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Four minutes of us staring at the sun. Enjoy the masters, everyone. Can you imagine if it blew up right now? I can't see anything. I can't. Oh, wow. So I this. Can't see. So it didn't really get dark here at all. No. It's, no. it's funny when you well, look, it at, when you look at the back there. Yeah, a little shady, right? Yeah, yeah. we should Slim give shady. people a better description. It it pretty much looks the same way when you take off your thing. Beautiful blue sky. But yeah, it is. But there is. It's a little darker. Right? Like I don't think it, 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 it is. I think you're imagining it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Not really. We had a little bit. Forever's gonna start tonight. Forever's gonna start. Welcome everyone to live at the range. <laughs> uh, we're in our backyard here at Augusta National, trying to do another segment before the guys have had too much alcohol, because we're trying to save, this is the year we save the Masters podcast. So for this particular segment, this is called the Augusta 2024 Challenge, Joe versus Pro. Yes, this is definite Joe. It features, it features Bump, Hi, Jamie, our producer for the Masters against former PGA Tour professional and now ace commentator Graham Dillette. Never heard of him. In our backyard this year in Augusta, we have a uh, we have a little chipping chipping area and a putting green. 
So this will be a... Uh, oh, this, I'm sorry. I'm James Duffy, joined by my color analyst. Esteemed colleague. <laughs> Sean Puffy Cameron. Yes. Who, of course, uh, what, what, I won this Cameron's. tournament. I won this tournament in 2017. Yes, the 2017 champion. Hence, his role here as now color analyst. Color analyst. All right. This is a par four. It's about 12 yards long. Bumps going first. There's no video of this. This is just. This is radio. This is like Mark Zucchino. <laughs> you got to paint the picture. All right. J Jamie's got a. He's got a 58 degree wedge, I believe. Choke down to the. Oh, it is a 60. Yeah. Mistake there. The it. caddy gave me the wrong sign. <laughs> All right. I love to choke down. James Upford. This is the one hole par four challenge. You're, you're playing. You're not supposed to be commentating. Oh, it's a nice oh, chip. It's, nice it's a little chip. long, though. Oh, it's into the, in the back. Dirt. Off back and burst. into the, the dirt. Burst. Off the green. What happened there, Cammers? Uh, he got a little bit of an unfriendly roll. Okay. Well, not a bad shot, though. Graham Dillette, for the purpose of this competition, will be playing left-handed. Oh, it's a good chip, but it's also deep. It hits the leg of a chair. It hits the leg of a chair and ends up one foot from the pin. What? Cameras. That is one of the greatest shots. He's already in. He's already in for eagle. He's in for eagle. All right. So let's. So here now, Bump has about seven feet for eagle, but he has to negotiate a power cord, a dirt tough lie, about three foot of feet of rough and three tell feet Lanny of green. And tell Lanny and Andrew over there in the quiet. hot tub. I think I should, I think I should too. You want the gallery to be quiet? No, I, I was going to, if I was going to use this wedge, which I'm now switching to the putter, I was going to tell them to heads up. Oh, okay. Yeah, they Not are, they are a danger in the hot tub. But there is a two-year exemption on the line here. <laughs> two-year exemption! Do uh, I get FedEx points? <laughs> You will you'll be invited back to this tournament for the next two years if you make this. If not, next year, Adam Scully will be like, participating. I look at I feel really good about my game right now, but I have about a negative twenty percent chance of making this to tie. We needed to put the little uh, the, the airbud in your ear to do the walk Can and you talk. Pull the pin? I will pull the pin. What are you looking at? There's a nurse over here. <laughs> Wait. <a second. laughs> Good thing he's already in. He's been distracted by the, the neighbor in our backyard. All right. Jamie Riddle sizing it up. Once again, about seven, six and a half feet over a power cord, over the rough, onto the green. I think it's got, uh, it's a little bit uh, left to right. Left to right. Hold on. I think I'm going to get a jump that way right now. Here we go. Cameras. Here it goes. This is to force. This is to force a playoff. Yeah. Force a playoff. Let's see. Oh! It lipped out. It lipped out. But we're playing Augusta rules. That counts. <laughs> it does count. COVID rules. Wait a second. No, we gave you one stroke. Because you're playing a professional, even though he's playing left-handed. Former. So what's happened now? <laughs> after after Bump lipped out, he's now got about 12 feet left for birdie net eagle I'll to force a playoff. Any hole you want. Oh, oh I'm, wow. Wow. Okay. I'm not interesting. I'm not that. I'm, well, why not? No, he's going. He's going to the. <laughs> what are you going to do? There are five holes on this that. putting green. I got to do that. It's exactly okay. how it would be <laughs> okay, in our four. bet, One, which two, people three, have four. said, our bet for the par three course. All right. I can, I'm playing it as it is. Oh, okay. what Bump is referring to is, I believe we've talked about this on the podcast yeah, before, that uh, Bump figures he could break 40 on the par three course, but if he fails to, if he does, what does he get, like 50 million? And then if he fails to break 40... We shoot him in the head and roll him into the pond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. I, get, I joined my buddy Cliffy in the pond. 12 feet for birdie net eagle to force a playoff. Bump. Oh, it's online. It's online. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Expect anything different? <laughs> All right. Two years. Two years. No, it's a playoff. It's a playoff. All right. This is good because it's extending the segments. So less drunky, drunky time later. <coughs> Puffy, by the way, with a deathly cough. No, it's probably making us all sick. Thank you, Skull. All right. That was unbelievable. 
All, All right, Ron oh, no. Scully, I'll be watching you. <laughs> so the pl- I channeled that for the playoff hole. They're not going back to 18 as you would see in most tournaments. We're going over to seven. Seven is an uphill chip over a retaining wall. Oh God, I don't, I don't know if uh, Bob has this in his. Bag. Onto the green. Be careful for Adam Scully and uh, Mr. Wolf, Nicole. Who's uh, okay, sitting so in the cabana right now? Hold on. It's this one? Okay. All right, so it's about a it's about an eight yard shot over the retaining wall from oh, Jesus. Whoa! Oh, Get in. it's all oh, once again he gets lucky. That was headed for the water hazard, also known as the pool. Spin, dog. Had the spin. It had the spin. Spun nicely. All right. Bump, trying to not put himself in the hole he was in and regulation. Trying not to hit that off the retaining wall. <laughs> this is terrifying. Groin. Nicole, Mr. Wolf, terrified over there. There's like a 1% chance this doesn't hurt. Adam Scully trying to produce his show, covering himself with his laptop. All right, here we go. <laughs> Cameras is running away. This is, this is terrifying. Hold on, we're going to video this one so Stoff can post it online. Hold on a second. Very rare for a fellow competitor to be taping the other competitor in the playoff. Very useful. Oh, right. God, he's killed Bobby Weeks. <laughs> oh, Weeks, he's just, Weeks, he's just come out from his shower. All right, here we go. Takes a deft touch. Oh, it's a little long. Oh, it also stops. It's on the fringe. So they're both, they're both a little long. Dillette has about four feet through the rough. He's going to go with the wedge. Interesting decision here. Uh, but Bump is away. Bump has about six feet, three feet oh, through the Bump, fringe. Bump gets a stroke here, though, right? Cameras, your thoughts. Oh, Bump, Bump does, does get a stroke. stroke he has a stroke here. Does Look Bump get a stroke in? Yeah. Yes, he does. All right. So, Bump, the wise move, Cameras, would not this, to be cozy this up yes, close. Yes, but I don't think forced, he's wise. Force to let to make. Here we go. He's going to leave it into the fringe. Focus. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. He's oh, hit it six feet by. <laughs> he's, hit it. he's still away. He's still so now, away. Wait, hold on. Now they're even, though. This, now the stroke is, is even. This has turned from what was a great moment. This is Danny McCarthy last week. <laughs> it's turned into one of the greatest choke jobs in the history of backyard Augusta golf. This for net eagle oh oh, oh my goodness he walked all right he walked you should mark that you should no you should mark that no he wants to finish he's gonna finish this would be for par net birdie and okay. now exactly. and now delette just win. needs to get for the win up and down yep the loser has to cannonball into the what did pool. you make there four did you make four four, three. four. so if he three. okay so he has to make this to win yeah delette to win Oh, oh my oh my goodness he's gone a big mistake electing to go with the wedge now he's got a rusty old mini putt, mini golf putter and he's got six feet to force a second playoff hole not taking any time cameras oh and he wow, just pounds in the middle professional that's why he just pounds in the middle wow we're what going to a second hole? playoff hole <laughs> All right. Oh no. oh, no. Are they going to? We're going to the back. Oh, radio listeners. Out of the hot tub. They've decided to play a hole that's rarely played here. Uh, they're going to go across the yard over the entire length of the pool to the putting green, which is very tiny. One of the most dramatic holes in all of golf. <laughs> it really is. Once again, bump is away here. It's about a 25-yard hole over the pool, over the hot tub. He's got his wedge. Oh, oh it's a good shot. Oh, he's in the water. <laughs> he's, he's in the hot tub. He's in the hot tub. Well, he almost did it. It was he so so it. close to good. I got to quit, quit my five packs a day. <laughs> <laughs> Lefty Dillette here. Oh, oh no. He's oh. off the roof. Jordan Spieth <laughs> off the roof of the shack and over the fence, or is it back there? I think he's OB. <laughs> Cameras? I think we might have hey, two new balls. Oh, I see a, I see I a ball. A I see a ball down there. It's a movable? It's a very tough spot, though. The entire crew. Dottie, get over there and see what we got. I'm thinking you clear. I think he cleared the fence, no? Is that a ball? No, that's not a ball. Oh, what about that? What about that back one? 
We're searching, searching for the ball here. Oh. <laughs> Could be poison ivy. All right. All right. So we have a, a lost ball situation, but according to local rules, there's no OB over there, so he gets a free drop on the green. Yeah, we can't find it. Well, I'm just going to take my two strokes and go back to the tee. Yeah. You're both. Oh, a, I love it. Oh, he's going to go back to the tee and play his reload. third. He's going to reload. You, you oh, have to drop. Wicked. You did not clear the hazard, so you will also have to go back to the tee. So we both of you. Reload. Do I have two balls? Because I can't get that one. <laughs> oh. Here, give me that putter. Oh, yeah. Puffy, cameras, you got to dive in. <laughs> That's my yeah. job. That's the endless job. Lanny, digging it out. Oh, look at Lanny. Uh, technology. Oh, Andrew Lawson coming over with the pool skimming net. Nice. Oh! The Lanny's got to, you know, he's giving a couple of things. CBS would be in a three-minute commercial break now, but this is thanks to our sponsors, Mick Ultra. Mick Ultra and, this is, and Miller Lite. This is uninterrupted coverage here. Here we go. What's this street called? What's this street called, Nicole? What street is this? Falcon Crest. It's the Lake Forest Invitational here at Augusta, the second most prestigious event in Augusta in April. What's uh, what is uh, what is GD doing? Oh, he's filming it. Yeah, it's a it's a we're sh a little tight with the crew here. All right, so just resetting the scene here. Both players have hit their balls into tough situations. Oh. He's shushing the play-by-play -play guy. Oh, oh right. this time, that is also in the water. Dillette left-handed. Oh, he's, oh, he's diving in for it. What a moment. What a moment. Where is it? It's floating. It turned behind you. It's a floating golf ball. It's behind you. You could have hit that. He gave him a rubber ball. Cancer bottles. Bernie wants to know cancer bottles. Somebody's Graham Dillette, one of Canada's best-ever golfers, jumping in to retrieve... His ball. Does, does he get a free a free shot for that? I think he gets a free shot. For free shot for ball. that. That's Thanks, fine. guys. That's so he will get to go again. Oh man! Now look at now he's intimidating. He's, he's shirtless. He's got his tattoos showing. Here we go one more time. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is good. Oh, what a shot! It's just rolled off the back, but it was terrific. Just over the green for Dillette. Topless, soaking wet, playing wrong-handed. Still. Do I have to go? You don't have to go. No, we do. We don't want to. That's a two-stroke penalty. Okay, I don't want that. All right. So now it's Rydal. The pressure is on now. Get no, over. Gotta Get go. Over. Back, back into the hot tub. <laughs> dive it. Dive in. Dive in. Dive in. He's in. Bump is going in. Make sure you don't have your phone. Oh, don't do a belly flop. That's a hot tub. It's two feet deep. <laughs> she, she's scaring the heck out of me. You have to produce coverage this week, but you you do have to, you do have to get fully fully oh, yeah. go. You got to go head first to get it. Oh boy, oh boy, he's got it, he's got it. Bub gets a free shot. All right, he's got one last try now. That was a pretty nice block. It was. You just need water. If you had just been a little shorter, you might have hit the edge and it would have bounced. You're over. so close. I know. Actually, your two shots have been better collectively than Dillette's two mistakes. But he is, a, he is alas, left his third one was much I'm better. My and he was naked wrong head. All right. One more time. One bump. Time. Bump. This is his last chance. Yes. He needs to get this close. Cameras? I believe he has this in his bag. Hey, it's back in the hot tub again. All right. He's got to go. <laughs> He's got to go back in. This is unprecedented. <laughs> He's never seen this before. This would be like Vandeveld jumping into the the the, the burn. The burn. He went in the burn. He's back in the burn. It's back in the burn. What hole are we going? I might have some issues. Oh, oh. Uh, we we gotta wait till bump shot, and then we'll determine our hole. Bump's gonna just his, his pants are gonna be so heavy. <laughs> his pants are heavy. Just to paint the picture, Bump's Haynes underwear are emerging as his heavy, heavy shorts start to fall slowly down his ass. Jogging shorts was a was a bad idea. We should be on PGA Tour Live right now. We're wasting our time at TSN. Don't know what's happening. All right, here we go. Once again, 
third time will be the charm. I think it's the fourth. <laughs> Pump with the wedge. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, oh. oh, he can play from there. <laughs> Actually, that is a one stroke penalty and a drop yeah. because you cleared the deep end of the pool and made it into the hazard. No, he will putt from there. He will putt from there with a one stroke penalty. So. Graham has a one-stroke advantage over you, Nat, right now. But remember, Where is it? you, you're right over there. Yeah, over here. The, the hole we are going for is this one here. <laughs> it was, nope. <laughs> you can't be moving any landscape lighting. All right, bump. Okay, here comes Graham's shot. Uh, we've, we've lost track, so let's just call these your... Your third and his second for the sake of clarity for our listeners. Yes. Graham DeLette's going wrong-handed between his oh, legs. Oh, I love it. And he's onto the green. Bump, still topless, has got a putt over the patio, through the rough, and onto the green. It's well done. Oh, oh, my, oh my goodness. God. He made it! 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 He made it. He made it. Bump has won the forest. What is it called? <laughs> Out of nowhere, after putting three balls in the hot tub, another one in the shallow end, he makes it. Uh, well, no, wait a second. Okay. Okay. An extra hole. We did give Bump a few breaks. Delette's now got to make a 15-footer. Oh, my God. Oh, just missed. And so, <laughs> you have defeated a former PGA Tour professional playing wrong-handed in his underwear. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look, I'm going to take every break I can get, but I didn't quit. That, that hot tub is not hot. <laughs> and I'm really cold right now. But I stuck to it. And I, you know, this is what I do. I make, I make sh the tough shots look easy. I think it's time to bring back emotion. I think it's time to bring back. Shots look bad too. It's time to bring back emotional bump. You know, two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, I never would have dreamed this, but I stuck to it. I worked on my patio putting, <laughs> and I, you know, I knew I could do it. I just believed all the time, and I was so grateful for Graham. He's a great champion. Not today. <laughs> I've actually never won anything in my life. Yes, that's not true. You win at life, man. But, you know, today is a great day. It is. It's it a great is. day. Go get changed for the trophy presentation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, bumps. Two-year exemption! Two-year exemption. <laughs> All right. Our next segment here from the Masters Pod is called, it's one of our most popular segments. It's called Where Are You From? But it's not a listener edition, it's a Masters edition. Where are you from? Where are you from? This is the silliest segment that we've ever done. The silliest song that I've sung. Where are you from? In this segment... I will be testing cameras with 10 players in the field here at Augusta National for the 88 Masters, and he will have to identify what nation they are from. The rest of our competitors here in the cabana on Lake Forest Drive will wager on how many cameras will get right from 0 to 10. Bump, as the champion of the golf tournament, you can pick first. How many do you think cameras will get right out of 10? Five out of ten. Mr. Wolf, Nicole, who, who has set up this great trip, she selects four for us. I'm taking the over. Scully. No, you have to pick a number. Oh, six. Six. So we got four, five, and six. Eight. Graham Dillette eight. takes eight. Bob Weeks, two. two. <laughs> Lanny. I'm going to go one dollar. One. One. Lawson, rookie. Yeah. Does anybody pick seven yet? No. What does that leave you with? Three? Nine. Nine? Does anybody have three? I will go with three. Is that right? Did we cover the whole one through ten? How many of us are there? Four? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Here we go. Nobody please blurt out the answers, including the golf producer, to make yourself seem smart. 
First up, yes. first up, where are you from, Masters Edition? Yeah. Ryan Fox. Ooh, Foxy. Ryan Fox. USA. I want to take three. I want three. New Zealand. Ryan Fox is from New Zealand. I didn't think the Fox family got all the way down to New Zealand. All right. Nine in a row. Like, that was a layup. I'll try to, I'll try to do a little bit of an easier one. Okay. Emiliano Grillo. Ooh. Argentina. Yes, he's one for two. Ding, ding. He's one for two. You're not a complete idiot. All right. It's what tour is Fox even on? PGA Tour. PGA Tour. Yes. And European How did he win? He's won like 18 times. He won like four or five times. All right. He's the Tiger Woods of the Here we go. <laughs> Number three. Yes. Nikolai Hoygaard. Nikolai Hoygaard. He's in the Ryder Cup. Stop. Netherlands. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the answer is Denmark. Damn it, that's the same thing. <laughs> One for three. One for three. All right. Sung J Im. That's South Korea. Ding, ding. Also known as just Korea on the Masters website, but we'll accept it. I, uh, I, I recognize North Korea. Two out of four. <laughs> All right. Next up. Mm-hmm. Recently qualified with a win a couple of weeks ago, Steven Yeager. <laughs> Steven, do you need? Uh, you can like in the spelling bee. You can ask for a spelling of the name. That's all you can ask. Can, for. I, can I have a uh, nationality for uh, family tree? <laughs> family tree. The spelling of the name is S T E P H A N Jaeger J A E G E R. Steven oh. Jaeger. India. <laughs> Did you watch the tournament? You know he is a Caucasian male. Oh. So I'm going to give you one more chance on this one. Seriously, you went J-A-E-G-R and you came up with India. That's what you came think up with. Think Jagermeister. England. <laughs> That's good. At least it's Mick Jagger. It's like Mick Jagger. The answer is Germany. Germany. That's not a German name. Jagermoms? Jagermoms. Buffy, just get five. What are we at right now? Two. Two out of five. Four. Or four, two or five. Two out of five. All right. Kurt Kitayama. Kurt oh. Kitayama. Japan. <laughs> that is the United States of America. Kurt Kitayama. That is a trick question. <laughs> we give him a mulligan on that? That is a trick no. question. No. no. All right. So you're down two for six. I didn't know he's American. Two for six. You do a leaderboard for Christ's sake. All right. I don't like the flags. I only see the whole people. What the hell? Adrian Moronk. On the live tour after a successful work on the DP World Tour. Can I get a spelling of Moronk? M-E-R-O-N-K. M-E-R-O-N-K. Adrian Moronk. Can I get a picture of the golfer? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Ad- Adrian Moronk. Use Moronk in a sentence. Oh, God. Uh, Moronk. Someone's going to be very upset with you when you get this wrong. Switzerland. <laughs> Poland. Damn it. Not bad. Has his favorite golf. Just repeating that Puffy is one of the producers of the Masters. Yep. <laughs> Here I on TSN. the other tournaments. <laughs> All right. Two for six. Two for seven. Ooh. Two for seven. You need to get three. The last one. Come on. I can do it. <sighs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> Jimmy had three. All right. Matthew Pavon. Okay. France. Correct. Ding. 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 Four. One Look more, Puff. Two more. Three Puff. for eight. Two more you're gonna miss. Three for eight. All right. Minwoo Lee. <laughs> Minwoo Lee. I think you're a tricky son of a b- and you're going to make me sound bad, but I'm going to say USA. <laughs> that would be Australia. <laughs> Two for nine. Okay, so the only... The only people in the running for the title are the two and the three. He's only got two. No, I got three. I Does got, he have three? I three. I so I Bob three. has three. Who has got four? Three. I do. Got two. No, three, yeah. All right. He got Matthew Pavon. Yeah. And he got Emiliano Grillo. Okay. Yeah. Grillo. Yeah, I did. I got he did get Grillo. Grillo. So Weeksy right now is at three. Nicole has four. Yeah. 
So oh, I thought Jimmy Puffy had gets it. Sorry, Cam, Cammy, Cammers, <laughs> Cammers gets it right. Nicole wins. Yeah. Cammer gets it wrong. Weeksy is the champion. Okay. Let's go with Sep Straka. Sep Straka to decide the winner. <laughs> Sep Straka. <laughs> okay, I think I have it. Okay, hold on. Sep Straka. Austria. The winner is Nicole, oh, Mr. Wolf. It was Austria, right? So well does her Austria is the correct answer. <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, we haven't figured that out. You were usually a driver from TaylorMade. <laughs> Some of those are hard. Some of those are hard. No, they weren't. None of them were hard. <laughs> they None were hard. hard. They were hard. The Should we do a bonus round just for fun? Throw a few more in there? Well, is there anyone we Absolutely. can get this guy wrong on bump? Can we fool bump? All right. Can we fool bump? All right. Let's see what we can do. Eric Van Royen. Uh, South Africa. Well, that's easy. Ding, ding. Santiago de la Fuente. Yeah, this one. I was thinking of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Santiago de la Fuente. Ooh, that Answer loudly. He won the Latin American Amateur. Yes. We had a practice ride today with somebody. Oh, so he's... I believe it's... I'm not going to get this. I don't believe. It's Mexico. It is Mexico. <laughs> Damn it. Ding. This is Ding. my day. <laughs> it's my day. We should run over to... Will, he, will he know I that? <laughs> yes, he will know that. But he might so get confused Get day. confused on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Bump. Yeah. <coughs> Camillo Villegas. Ding. Thought Ding. you might go Argentina there. You know, might get a little lazy. All right, here's another one for you. Adam Schienk. Adam Schienk. Damn it. You would add me. I tried. Let's just try different pronunciations to see if we can fool him. All right? How about him? He might not. All right. Tihar Bijan. O Lee Son. Oh. Oh. Be Giorn Ol Lee Sen. Yes. <laughs> Thunder Bear? That's what that means. <laughs> uh, he is. That's a tough one. Ooh, I'm trying. It's, it's Norway. Uh, Incorrect! Denmark! So he's 50 he will 50. We're basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> what an installment. A great new segment. That we'll have to do from next year's Masters, but hopefully we'll get some new players or you'll do some studying, Puffy. No, I won't do any studying. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Congratulations to Mr. Wolf, our champion. Nicole always believed in me to get to four. <laughs> Recount. Now we've reached the point of the podcast where we listen to Puffy watch his son's hockey team. We find out what the host of the to the rink podcast is really like we're up 4-1 oh don't do that you prick I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a delicate time <laughs> I need I need a first right of approval on what goes out I might swear about little kids that aren't mine <laughs> oh what a move Lucas what's the score what's the situation it's 4-1 second period the tie cats Ten, grab a man. Is that your son? Yes. <laughs> this is the answer game. Uh, tell us about the goal he scored earlier. And Dan Rush buried it. One nothing goal. It was a big goal. Pretty good moment. Are you muting yourself now because you yes, know I'm I here on the podcast? Yeah, no, no. Go boys, let's go team. <laughs> everyone is, everyone doesn't matter who wins. <laughs> I hope they all have fun. <laughs> Come on, get out there. Get out there. Instead, got a boy, Blakey. We're here with Graham Dillette. What was your question? If Ask me if I actually want to do this thing. You have Before. no choice. That you, microphone's really close to my face. <laughs> As is my mouth now. <laughs> with my Cobb salad breath. No, I don't want your microphone. I'm happy to do it this way. Um, the first time you were on our podcast... You delivered a line which is uh, quite famous to our listeners where you said, people actually listen to this? <laughs> I recall. Yeah, that's true. It was pretty bad, <laughs> in all honesty. It really was. <laughs> and we're actually trying to save the reputation of the Master Podcast with this edition of the podcast. So hopefully you will be entertaining, sober, and reflective and all those well, things. Well, I am sober now. <laughs> I know that the one time when I was singing, what song was I singing there, Bob? 
when you were playing the guitar and I oh, yeah. forgot the words. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is my go-to karaoke song. And then <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember the, the words. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just got to ask you random questions because we have a lot of listeners who probably aren't golf fans. So, like, you know, we'll try to won't make it too golfy. Okay, tell me your what is your greatest golf moment? Like, the greatest shot you ever hit. I hold out against Jordan Spieth on the 18th hole in the President's Cup to win. That was so good. And you went nuts. That one, I just raised my hand. Oh, yeah, it was the other one you went nuts. I chipped in against Phil and Keegan because I really wanted to beat those two. Now it feels like you're bragging. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, was that the same same President's Cup, right? Same day, actually, because we had a bunch of, like, rain delays. So in the morning was the one match, and then the afternoon I took down Jordan. Is that like your and you're? I know you're you're super sports guy, so I, I'm sure you love the team events more than anything. Is that almost your biggest thrill from your golf career too? Yeah, that would be uh, the Olympics was another pretty proud moment or whatever. Walking through uh, the opening ceremonies, that was pretty awesome. What what are your what was the neatest thing that happened during your Olympic experience? Uh, Remind me which one it was. Brazil, uh, Rio, Rio, yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, the the thing that stands out the most to me is how much how like all the other athletes they you know they're designed to peak once every four years or whatever and the amount of work that they put in time over a course of four years like for us it was like if i didn't play well i was going to greensboro the next week to play for an eight million dollar purse you know (laughs) and it's like they're like oh my god you didn't didn't perform now it's four years until they get to do it again so like that kind of like you know, makes the hair stand on end, just like how much work and effort goes into it. Were you in the athlete's village? Yeah, we stayed, yeah, but it was very incomplete. What do you mean? Well, I, my light switch went up and down in my bathroom, but where the light was supposed to be was just three wires, <laughs> and there was no light. <laughs> oh, because I heard stories like that in Sochi, but I didn't know in Rio it was the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was, but it was fun. It was, was awesome. Was it cool hanging out with the athletes and everything? Yeah, it was great, and uh, we played a lot of ping pong. We actually hung out a lot with the... Um, field hockey guys um and we played a lot of ping pong with those guys and it was fun Can- canadian field hockey guys or from yeah other, other, canadian other field hockey guys yeah because we had like this little room because canada because it had so many athletes had its own like tower like mm. for lack of better words like an, an entire apartment complex or whatever um and so we just all kind of like hung out and there's no alcohol allowed but uh my caddy ray he would go sneak down to the coach's office and bring up a couple molson canadians for us <laughs> amazing now I, I asked you your best what was your, what's the worst shot of your golfing career the one that i wish i could have back as much as any was the final round hilton head i was in the lead eighth tee box i snap hooked one into the water made triple there that's the one that always kind of haunts me that I wish I could have back. Do you feel like that? Because you, you came close a bunch of times. Was that the closest? Um, that one, I, I felt like I was in total control. I was playing so well, and it was just kind of out of nowhere. Like there's, there's, There was times in final rounds where I finished second or third that I played well and just got beat. And then that was the one time I just felt like I really just let it go. Like mm-hmm. it was just like such a bad shot at the absolute worst time. And, uh, yeah, I think about it quite a bit, actually, even still. <laughs> now, people see you on our Masters coverage every year and, and the coverage of, of the majors that TSN does, but uh, the non-golf fans might not know that you're doing stuff for, uh, like, PGA Tour Live and such, right? Now you do events where you're on course. Yeah. What's that been like for you? It's been fun, actually. I, I like being on site and, like, seeing the guys. You kind of forget, like, the relationships you've built over years. And, uh, you know, the one thing when I first started doing that, actually it was Noda Begay here at the Masters told me he's like dude he's like you got to do something he's like you have this wealth of knowledge that there's nowhere else that you can use it there's and you don't really think about it but as you go around and play for 10 years on tour or whatever you build up all this knowledge and scars but mostly knowledge <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're pretty much useless outside of golf right <laughs> completely <laughs> that's like my wife says to me outside of sports if you did, if you couldn't talk about sports you'd be like absolutely useless in life <laughs> correct <laughs> but do you so have you had any cool experiences out there doing that is it uh... um i mean i've gotten to see some great shots like the one thing honestly when i look back i like i realize mistakes that i made in my career and how it's like you think at the time it's like it's so important, but in the grand scheme of things, when you kind of back up and stop thinking about it a little bit, I mean, it's just a shot in a golf tournament. And it's like the amount of pressure I put on myself sometimes and the amount of frustration that built because of poor shots and how hard I was on myself. And like, I just wish that I was nicer to myself during my career. And you see that with guys who 
um, that's my roundabout way to get to your question is you see guys who let things you know fall off their shoulders so easily and those are the guys that are always playing well and then uh, you see guys that are just so hard on themselves and they can't get out of these ruts sometimes right who did you ever play with tiger yeah one when? time uh saturday at the players championship i don't know it would have been 2015 or something what was that whole experience like well, i beat him by three <laughs> <laughs> actually it was funny but my one of my buddies uh from boise was with me we rented a house across the street at sawgrass country club that week and he found a bet somewhere that uh for me to beat tiger by five strokes on saturday and it was paid like plus four thousand or something so he put a hundred bucks on it he's like okay Deletti. he's like i got four thousand bucks if you beat tiger by five today so we come into 18 i'm three up i hit a good tee shot and i'm like wow if tiger hits one in the water here he's gonna make double i'm gonna win by five and cody cashes this bet but he blows it through the fairway but now he's got like a really tough shot where he's he's and he back then it was um a different time of the year and there was like this dormant bermuda rough which is like the ball jumps it does you can't like curve the ball out of it because you can't get as much spin so he starts this ball out over the water and i'm like that thing is in the water like he he actually is going to make double and cody's and this thing cuts back like 10 15 yards into the middle of the green two putt par so obviously he didn't get it but it was like everyone says like there's always one shot when you play with tiger that you like remember and that was it for me what was it like with like the crowds were insane and stuff right but you obviously handled it well uh, I just better than Tiger. <laughs> just handled it better than him. Was he in peak form, was, or was that no, a, like a bit of a downslide? He was, yeah, kind of on his way down at was the time. Was it post scandal? Um, yeah, and I think it maybe after his first back surgery. We actually talked a lot about our bad backs, kind of that day around. But um, yeah, it was fun. It was, I mean, it was electric. Like that was the only thing. Like my. Uh, my wife was with me too and she's like I don't ever want you to play with Tiger again she's like I can't even see a shot everyone's so rude they're pushing around you know right. so um, but yeah it was it was a cool experience I'm glad I got to do it once so you live uh, down Idaho mm -hmm. right with why did you end up there uh, that's where I ended up going to play college golf so I got my um, that was the best is that uh, where you met Ruby wife? yeah yeah okay so that's why that's why and you that's stayed that's why I stayed that's yeah. what I meant or exactly why you stayed there. yeah and uh you're, uh, you're going to be becoming a star on PGA Tour Live. Are you going to abandon us? This is really my way of trapping into you, making sure you make a commitment to stay with TSN long term. I plan on it. Yeah. Honestly, like I tell Jamie all the time, that you guys. That's bump. Yeah. He. Uh, this was like my start in the media world or whatever. Yeah. The, when I came here, it was COVID year. I think was yeah. my first one. And um, you know, without TSN, I wouldn't. You're nothing. Exactly. <laughs> you're literally, <laughs> literally. And also, your worst shot was not. Uh, that shot at uh, you talked about Don't from the tournament. Me. It was last night oh. uh, when you had a chance to beat Bump uh, in the first annual Forest Valley or what the hell ever it was called Open, and you you, you hit it. And I the, boned it over the boned it over the shaft. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't my best. But thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I think a, a much less um, inebriating segment than last time. <laughs> if you want to sing again later, we'll maybe we'll crack it open tonight. <laughs> thank you, Graham Delet. Hey, you bad buddy. Puffy was upset. After I did uh, the exclusive interview with Graham Dillette that nobody else has gotten this week at yeah. the Masters. Not Steve Sands, not Mike Tirico, not Scott Van Pelt. Scott Van Pelt. They've all been clamoring. Uh, why, were you, why were you so angry? Well, I mean, you were literally 10 feet away from me. We do a podcast together, and you just took it upon yourself to interview GD. And I, like, I had nothing to offer. All right, so to pay you back, because I never wanted to hurt you, I'm going to give you a chance for the exclusive with Bob Weeks, a member of multiple Halls of Fame. You've never done an interview I've before. I've never done, yeah. So right now, start. Okay. It's got to be informative. Okay. you got to get stories out of him. Okay. There has to be a master's twist. Okay. And no drunken, I apologize to the Queen references. No problem. I like how you put your beer down. That yep. shows commitment. Come so go ahead. Uh, do, you, do you need me to hold the microphone? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Uh, Bob, a little a bit of a softball. For why don't you welcome, welcome. Oh, Bob. welcome, uh, welcome <laughs> to the podcast of Bob Weeks, uh, Hall of Famer. Great to be here. Um, a golfing legend in our country and one of the preeminent uh, hockey, no, no, golf writers in <laughs> in uh, in Canada. Do a pickup there. Let's do a pickup. Yeah. Bob, one of the preeminent golf writers in Canada. 
Uh, Bob, first off, uh, twice divorced now. Uh, <laughs> how do you think that affected uh, your son, Chris, growing up in a broken home? <laughs> well, <laughs> nice to be here. And uh, <laughs> thanks. I, I'm a big listener, avid listener, uh, and I listen to the Rubber Boots podcast while I'm going on my runs. And uh, you, you get to meet Chris because he's coming down here this year to uh, to the Masters, his first time to the Masters. In fact, as we are talking, he is just about ready to take off. And, um, yeah, he's uh, he's actually never talked to me in the last 30 years, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I have to no, say, Bob, no. I've known you for a long time now. This is what, We're probably at 22 Masters together, and I've never yep. met Chris before, so very excited to meet if this son actually does exist. Well, it's, it's kind of a coincidence because I spent all night watching your son play hockey. and uh, It is true. It is they, true. they kind of dropped that ball in that game, but... We did. We have a big comeback coming. I, th- I suspect. I see we because I'm already joining your team. No I do po- love it. I do. Love no it. podcast plugs here. Continue with the interview. <laughs> you can watch the uh, great episode of To the Rink, the podcast that is available on all uh, platforms. Mm. Uh, so seriously, Bob, uh, we don't need to delve into uh, your history away from the course, but <laughs> uh, the Masters, your favorite event of the year, I would say, without uh, a doubt. Your best off the course memory from your years coming down oh, very here. Very good, very good one. Off the course memory, boy. There's been a lot over the years, but I will tell you the uh, the very first Masters I went to, I was here with a cup, a bunch of old uh, Toronto sports writers. We, I, we were all sharing houses. Everyone knows that you share a house down here, right? So I was with in a house with Rick Fraser, Jim Hunt. Tim Warnsby, Cam Cole from Vancouver. Cam Cole. And Cookie Gilchrist was also on there, another uh, great writer. And we were all in this house together. Is that a real name? Yeah, well, it's the Kent Gilchrist. Oh, sorry, the, the late your, your great. interview, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the late <laughs> Kent Gilchrist. And uh, Rick Fraser, we went to Canada night just as we did tonight. Yes. As we're taping this interview. And uh, Rick Fraser was known to have uh, a cocktail or 17, the late great. <laughs> Sorry, there's a little bit of a distraction going on here, but but anyway, um, um, one of Canada's greatest iron players <laughs> taking a leak by the tree in our rental house. <laughs> anyway, uh, Rick Fraser uh, came back from Canada the night after having chewed out the uh, CEO of uh, Golf Canada oh. at that time, and walked what in. What do you mean at? Oh, sorry, sorry. No. Follow, what do you mean? Follow up. What was my follow up? <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean chewed him out? Chewed him out. Yeah. What do you mean chewed him out? Said he wasn't doing a good job, oh. but in very harsh words. Oh wow. Came into the house, took his pants off. He had boxers on. Took his false teeth out, put them on the uh, banister. <laughs> walked over, poured himself a drink, sat in a lazy boy chair after having filled his glass up with CC and water, and promptly passed out in the glass in, in there. So, the uh, we've come a long way. Let's just say um, we don't drink CC anymore. No, that, that's probably the only difference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> uh, as we all know, James has false teeth, and he likes to pull them out and uh, yeah. lay them on the uh, the, the <laughs> counter at night. You didn't have to bring me into it. Just keep stick to the interview. Uh, that's all I had, really. <laughs> there was a lot of great moments, though. But over the years, you got Mike Weir winning, you got Tiger winning a bunch. Maybe times been here for pretty much all this those, masters, and this masters been wins. really good. And, and I'm trying to talk so you can get some <laughs> keys here. Yes, I'm gonna give you an earpiece we, for the next one. I'm gonna feed you questions. <laughs> uh, who do you think is gonna win this year's good Masters, one. Bob? Good one. good one. I think I think if you don't pick Scotty Scheffler, then you know you've you've got to pick him. He's the free space on the bingo card. Everyone's gonna pick him. I honestly don't think. He's going to win. For some reason, there's something deep inside me that says he's not going to win. You know what I really hope for this year, though? I really hope that there is a really close finish because we haven't had one in a while. That's true. You know, we need to have some drama on Sunday, some guys fighting it down the stretch. I don't know. It doesn't have to be a playoff, but a guy has to stand over a putt on the 18th hole and not be able to four putt and win the championship like Scotty Scheffler did a couple of years ago or John, John Rahm, Rahm kind of, you know, a couple of strokes, three strokes up. I just think that you need to have some some real drama coming down the stretch. So that's what I'm really hoping for. If there's a best story, I think it's Rory McIlroy. That would be great to see. Uh, I like Rory. He's a nice guy. Has gone through a lot over the last couple of years. And I think it would be kind of a neat story to see him win. What would be the best Canadian winner this week? Any Canadian who would win the Masters. Look, sure. we got three guys, and I can make you a case Hold right on. now. Four guys. Four guys. Excuse me. Sorry, Mike. Good interjection. Uh, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Can't believe you I, forgot Corey. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I would say honestly that if a Canadian won again, you know, it's it's a tremendous story. But it would not be like an overwhelming shock, right? Yeah, these guys are playing great, and every you know, it's it's a it, they're not favored, obviously. But but Nick Taylor has proved that he can play in the in the heat. Uh, Corey and Adam are both great players to different aspects of their game. Corey is great off the tee, great into the greens. Adam is a little bit longer off the tee than he's been in the past, not quite up to Corey's standards. But he putts great. He's got a good short game. He's got good touch. And it would be pretty dramatic, and it would be pretty neat for all of us, I, I, selfishly. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. we were here. You and I were here. And we, you were were the only two, we were the, we only, were the two. only two remaining from, from the Mike Weir win. And yeah. we remember what that night was like when it Mike was, won, right? I mean, it was pretty spectacular how hard we had to work and quickly we had to react. Yeah. and things fly this way and that way and rod black got the one-on-one and he had didn't have a jacket we had to get him a jacket and oh who would i'm sorry to interject yes if a canadian won this year who would do the interview in butler cabin jim nance okay bob weeks <laughs> jimmy or cameras cameras <laughs> you can <okay? laughs> make it <laughs> fighting the uh, pneumonia um, cameras, I think, would get the call. Yeah. Uh, cameras, why don't you wrap it up okay. see, uh, and throw it a break? Okay. Uh, Bob, thanks for uh, taking um, part in my uh, first interview on the podcast. And uh, let's throw it to break. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, cameras. Back with Bump, uh, who uh, was the, the winner of the Forest Valley uh, tournament yesterday. One of Bump's skills is to know all of the winners of the Masters. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to quiz you. Okay. Uh, hopefully you do better than Puffy did yesterday. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's start easy. 2015 Masters. Jordan Spieth. Ding. 2010. Phil Mickelson. Ding. 2003. Mike Weir. Ding. <laughs> 1997. Tiger Woods. Ding. Ding. 1992. Fred Couples. Ding. Ding. 1977. <laughs> So Fuzzy was 79. I don't know this 100%. I think it was Gary Player. Uh, 19. No. 2011. Charles Schwartzel. Wow, that was fast. One of the best masters ever, just with an anticlimactic anticlimactic, winner. His his finish was incredible. 2018. Uh, Patty Reed. Ding. Disappointing for all of us. Yes, we all we all hated that. 2019 trick question. Tiger Woods it wasn't a trick question. And finally, mm-hmm. 2024. Oh, that's a great question. I'm going Rory. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on the Rory train. I like it, bump. All right, this is the end of the Rubber Boots podcast. I thought we bounced back well. Yeah, very well from the last two years of debacle amazing it's uh it's late tuesday night um we've stayed away from the debauchery we stayed away from cameras and the drinky 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 the king no comments on the king no comments no. i do want i'd like to make an apology State to uh bob weeks for an undeserved first question in my hard-hitting interview, I got I was Mike Wallace for one moment, and I went in hard, and I apologize. I apologize. It was going to family is taboo, even on the Rubber Boots podcast. Do you have a, a retort? No, I, I think it's well deserved. Uh, you know. <laughs> what did you say? I actually liked it. Two failed marriages, and how did it, how how did it feel raising your son in a broken home? <laughs> That was his first question. It is in his first ever interview. I was kind of proud of him with the uh, softball at you here Bob. from a from a journalistic standpoint. Though I got a that was a that was a good I good leading question. I want to come kind of set the tone. Yeah. Oh, I well, I did bury the lead. Uh, what happened tonight? Was we, that Bob's second? No, <laughs> that the staff of was. the staff of the Rubber Boots Pod, Cammers, yes. Bump. Run, Bob Weeks, part timer Ryan Vardy, yes. and newcomer, yes, Andrew. Uh, all will be appearing in season three of Full Swing. Yes, after a very right. big moment tonight. Uh, Full Swing is the Netflix golf show. Yes, 
Uh, tonight at the uh, Canadian Barbecue, mm -hmm. Adam Hadwin was there, and the Full Swing Show is doing a show on Adam Hadwin. And uh, the cameras, as soon as you guys showed up, just lit up. Lit up. And the focus <laughs> appeared to be mostly on Vardy. On Vardy. <laughs> and cameras. Vardy party. And cameras. Bob was a asking all the questions. Yeah. Chammer, cameras shotgun to beer. <laughs> <laughs> While Bob was asking Adam Hadwin serious questions, which I don't know if that will I make the cut. I, I, I think it was all set up in advance that Adam would go to Bob to get the stuff. Well, did, you consult, the did you consult? Did you consult with? We were just kind of there. Maybe. You consulted with the producers, and it was all a setup. I cannot. Maybe. Confirm I don't know. Could be. Adam Might Hadwin confirmed that he has been named assistant captain. Mike Weir's first <laughs> assistant captain. He has foregone his, his eligibility. His eligibility. eligibility. <laughs> I did appreciate uh, Jimmy you telling me to suck it in halfway through the segment. I didn't say suck it in. I said flex. Because oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't want your one cameo to be a little a little soft. <laughs> you, you, you actually said suck it in after the first question that, that first <laughs> asked me. First off, Bob and I have already been in full swing. You were in full swing? Yeah, we yeah. had like a half a second shot during Rory's press conference at the Canadian Open where it was me and Bob. Right. I've been in season we're one there. and season two for oh. a grand total of about two seconds. Did you guys see me in the Patriots Dynasty episode as a cutaway as yeah. well? Yeah. Wearing sunglasses in an in indoor indoors. <laughs> but none of you guys have ever had a shot on tour. That is. <laughs> That's correct. correct. Or, take, or literally taking True. a full swing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's it, I think. I think we'll wrap it up here. Yeah, um, but I, I, I hit as many <laughs> oh, golf shots go. in my round at Augusta in 2010 as Graham did in his two rounds in 2013. That is Ouch. true. Did he say two rounds? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> are you, you going to put a caveat into the listeners? I mean, his four rounds. might be dropped. I mean, it's four rounds. <laughs> All of the stuff. That, oh, from full swing. All the stuff from full swing. No, we want to make them. We want to make them tune in for the Adam Hadwin episode. Good chance that we make the really because five guys sitting around at a barbecue is riveting television on the netflix them, i asked him i said <laughs> all I would you all I rather know. win a medal at a the question. olympics or the president's cup yeah that was a good question what did he say and he said president's cup at home uh, yeah, yeah president's cup at home yeah. uh, if it wasn't on smooth. home he'd say medal and i said bullshit you, you know what would have been good if we invited the Hadwins over, who are only staying like four doors down, and the Netflix crew came to this moment yes, right here? Yes. Then let's, we'd have a show. Let's, let's call them with the right bullhorn. Now. Let's make it a point right now. If Adam Hadwin, by some weird chance, misses the cut, we invite them over for dinner here. Yeah. I, I agree. All right. That's true. Yeah, we should do that. All right. I agree. We Graham, might have to call Graham Gillette people. would have done that when he played. Jessica Hadwin, by the way, really good follow on Twitter for you uh, golf fans. Adam's wife. She's very funny. Makes a little. A more of, I just uh, want to say. <laughs> I just want to say. Are you going to do emo bump emotional bump, bump ends the pod? Uh, <laughs> well, here it is. I love you guys, and you make this week always so special. This is from. 20 this is my twenty seventh Masters. I mean twenty first, and every year. Matter. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Vardy. Thank you, Vardy. This is why we work. Sign off. Thank you for watching the Rubber Boots yeah. podcast. Listening, probably. We didn't do any video. Listening. Yet. There's no video. Thank God. So, cue the theme song. This is JD's podcast. JD's Rubber Boots podcast. He's going to sit and relax and tell you all sorts of stories. Gonna talk all about life and sports And probably we'll play some games And if nothing else, you know we're gonna have a laugh This is the podcast for the Masters Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight?